It's kind of a tricky job. I've got to try and fish the wire out with my long line with a grapple on the end and uh, an attempt not to damage the, the existing wire. Otherwise, we'll have to replace that as well. Uh, it's quite difficult to uh, thread the little hook down there. There's only about a six inch gap that I've got to try and get it into. I'm fairly high over the ground and there's little reference while I'm doing this. Okay, Doug, middle phase is completely down on the ground. Careful. Having hooked off the old wire, Jono now has to concentrate on installing the new line. It's a hazardous and complex manoeuvre. He'll be dragging 2,000 feet of rope attached to the new power line across the canyon to be placed into position by a waiting ground crew. It's fairly tricky to fly sideways. I'm looking sideways out at where I've been. I'm looking where I'm trying to look around at where I'm going. My head's on a swivel pretty much most of the time. I have wires all around me. I have to constantly think about where I would go now if the engine quit. That's a constant, constant thing. It's, it's total concentration. Within half an hour, Jono's done his job successfully. He takes lineman Thad up to carry out some final checks along the line. The pilot's gonna need another set of eyes. We're gonna inspect the wire, make sure it hasn't been damaged. Jono's flying, he's looking too, but he's, it's a lot easier if I'm up there helping him look because he's gotta fly. So I go up there to give him another set of eyes, which is always better, it's safer. Thad and I inspected it, everything looks good. At the end of the day, we've got the power restored as quickly as possible and with minimal fuss. They was uh, inspecting all They were doing inspections mm -hmm. for sure. The day has been a stark reminder for the team of how dangerous their job can be. And then it's still smoking right there, it's still on fire. So this must have been pretty recent right after that. Yeah. Well, like they said down there, a fisherman seen the helicopter go down, he called 911. That's how they got to it. They're still smoking in the back. Mm -hmm. With such high-risk work, the industry claims many lives. In America, over the past five years, a power line worker was electrocuted on average every three weeks. Yeah, it's gone. It's, it's burned up. To me, it makes me nervous. It makes me very edgy. Two men died. It's, it's not a good feeling. You know, this is a dangerous job. Without the helicopter, it's a dangerous job. You go to the helicopter and you just increased a lot. You know, our safety books, all the power company safety books have been written in blood. They have been written in blood because somebody has died. It's the final day of the spacer job, and the emergency work at the crash site has put the team severely behind schedule. There's still over a hundred spacers to install. We're working flat out today, and uh, we're gonna kick ass. I've had to really get behind the guys and get this thing going. I'm hoping that we're gonna do it. As fast as you can do it safely is what they want, and that's what we're going to do. They really want this stuff done. To make matters worse, temperatures are soaring. It's exactly like running a marathon in 100 degree heat. Actually, I would say it's like sprinting as fast as you can for 45 minutes in 100 degree heat. And when you get off the helicopter, you're done. Your, your body just can't do it. Freaking hot. I'm tired. My muscles are spasm. Spasming. It's hot. 
I mean, it's about 100 degrees out here. The humidity is really, really high today. I'm soaking wet. But sweating that much, it really helped because the blades, the, they, they helped cool me off. Help me cool me off a lot. If it wasn't for those blades, couldn't do this. You, you, de you dehydrate so quick, so fast. I'm still shaking. I'm still shaking from it. The extreme heat makes a hazardous job even riskier. It just takes a toll on your body, you know, mentally and physically. You know, when your body starts getting tired, your head starts to get tired. And you just have to stay just focused all day long. And if you lose focus is when you die or you kill someone else. That's just the way it is. It's exhausting. By the time it gets to about this time of the day, at the end of the day, five o'clock, I'm about done. You've really got to watch it when the fatigue sets in because you start, your decision making goes downhill rapidly as the fatigue sets in and you start not caring, and you've got to recognize that before it happens. With the last spacer in place, the job is finally done. Fuck me, I'm knackered. <laughs> we did manage to get the job done. Boys are magnificent as always. I just want to tell everybody thank you. You guys done a hell of a job. Most importantly, you did it safely. Let's get out of here. This Let's suit go. is starting to chafe. <laughs> it may be exhausting and dangerous work, but for these guys, it's worth it. The money they take home is over twice the national average. Yeah, dog. Very dog. <laughs> Coming from all across the states, the team spend weeks at a time on the road, living out of motels. Away from their families, they have just each other for company. All the guys are actually great. You know, we have a <laughs> we have a fairly similar sense of humor, <laughs> and uh, we can banter back and forth. So that's always fun. He sucks. Yeah, he, he does so. <laughs> I win. What's up, buddy? What's going on, Skelly? How you been? Not too much. Not too much. <laughs> Look, he's got it. The mechanic, everyone. There he is, in his element. <laughs> this is often how we spend our evenings here at the motel. We get beer at the end of the evening and hang out sometimes. You know, when there's time, when opportunity possesses itself. You know, it, it helps with the, uh, you know, shutting off the job a little bit. Because we we it's we very rarely talk about work. It's we talk about our lives other than work here. You know, unwind a little mm -hmm. bit. This is your family. I mean, we spend more time with these guys per month than you do with your, your girlfriends, your down. children. <laughs> so everyone relies on everyone. You have to have it. You need this kind of stuff. But we work these long days, 12, 14 hour days. And sometimes I don't, I don't, I work with them all day. I don't want to look at them anymore. I'm done with them. But other days, there's other days that I want to hang out. I'm looking for a buddy to drink with. I look for a guy like Slider to chase women to take the fat nasty for me. <laughs> take the friend, take the friend of the <laughs> Give him another shot. It's really tough on relationships. It's, you know, one of the things that I said I would never do was have the long distance relationships because I just don't understand the point of them because then are you really in a relationship if the person's not there? It's kind of like a weird thing. And, um, you know, and a lot of relationships suffer from that. So I think, you know, we've worked really hard at, at trying to maintain this relationship. And it demands a lot. You know, when he gets up in the morning, I'm like, make sure you eat, make sure you get, a, get enough sleep, because any little day off, and who knows what could happen. After the break, the team confront the job they most dread, a lethal mix of height, electricity, and water. Most people, when you tell them what we're doing, think we're insane. This is without a doubt the most dangerous thing that Air 2 performs. The 
team from Air 2, a specialist company of power line workers, are carrying out critical maintenance work on some of the most dangerous lines in the world. Working at over 100 feet in the air on live wires at a massive 500,000 volts, they're about to ramp up the risk one more notch by adding water. This is, in my opinion, the most dangerous thing that Air 2 performs. It is, without a doubt, incredibly risky. There's a build-up of bird droppings on the V-shaped insulators. These contaminants can cause a major electrical fault and must be cleaned off. Uh, we are still on the Kyoto West Memphis 500 kV line. We tested everything in the tank, in the trailer, in the tank, on the helicopter, and coming out of the boom, water tested good, we're ready to wash. For such high-risk work, Jono needs an experienced hand. When I first went up and washed my first structure, which was probably about four years ago, I was, I was a little nervous. But uh, you got to do what you've been trained to do and get her done. If you don't get a little scared, then you've got problems. You're going to get hurt. We've modified the helicopter from its normal configuration to a wash rig configuration. It consists of a 3,500 horsepower high pressure pump. Under the belly is a 300 liter water tank. The tank will contain enough water to allow us to wash at full power for around 10 to 15 minutes. On the other side of the helicopter, is an 18-foot insulated washing boom. It is extremely powerful. It'll clean paint off if it needs to. For this work, known as hot washing, it's vital that the water they use is completely pure. Should we ever get contaminated water in the water system, the consequences could be disastrous for us. It would immediately make that water conductive. On a 500 kV system, it will produce a fireball in the region of about 20 feet across. Hot washing for me, every time I go in, I make sure that everything is absolutely 100% as safe as we can make it before we even attempt it. And if there's anything that I don't like or I don't feel sure about, I'm done. It is extremely counterintuitive to be spraying water on a power line. In fact, most people, when you tell them what we're doing, think we're insane. Most countries don't allow you to even put a power socket in a bathroom. And here we are spraying water at high pressure over the insulators of a 500,000 volt power line. Okay, this one we're going inside. Okay. For Jono and Charlie, Absolute concentration is critical. The lineman and the pilot work incredibly closely. The lineman is constantly watching where the blades are and where the tail is. All the parts of the helicopter that the pilot can't see, the lineman will be having eyes on to keep us out of trouble. It puts a lot of strain on both of us when we do it, and you're constantly having to plan for the next potential emergency. Okay, we're out of water, we're heading back in. Alright, that'll be that then, eh? Okay. <laughs> Mission accomplished for Jono and Charlie. For power line workers, each job presents different risks and challenges. But for their next job, the team are pushing the boundaries even further as they're about to try something that's never been done before. The job that he's going on next, I've, you know, he's told me very little. Um, he doesn't tell me anything. And he, we have not talked specifically. The only thing that he said in vague, broad terms is, oh, I'm doing this, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going on this job and I'm really excited because it's something new and different. And that's it. He won't tell me anything specifically about it um, because he doesn't want me to worry. And that's kind of a constant with us that, you know, I want to know more, you know, <laughs> and he wants to tell me as little as possible. And I probably won't get to go to Arkansas. It's better that way. 
<laughs> for you. It's better for you that I way is what it is. From experience in really? relationships your... that it's better. Yes. And you think the same is true for me? Yeah. 